Hi, everyone. I'm your host, Patty Giarusso, and this is Let's Talk Pets on Society Bites Radio. Today, we welcome back to the show Kathy Poblowski from Lost Dogs of America. And as 2020 comes to a close, and I'm sure, like me, you are all happy to hear that, but first we have to get through the holidays, and the holidays are going to look different this year. Um, there won't be as many holiday gatherings, parties, or get-togethers, but still pet safety is important to think about and prepare for. So being aware of things as simple as where your nearest ER vet is could ultimately save your pet's life during the holidays. So Kathy and I want to talk about some holiday safety tips for you to keep in mind and think about between now and New Year's Eve. So welcome to the show, Kathy. Thanks for having me, Patty. Yeah, so this is a topic we talk about. We talked about it last year, but it's worth repeating because um, I think, you know, people either forget or, you know, just the hullabaloo of everything, you know, um, it kind of, you know, you don't put that as a top priority but it is a top priority so um i yeah, wanted you to yeah. to offer some good tips for people well and and i totally agree and i think sometimes like a year goes by and things change you know either people have a new pet or you know that they've never had around the holidays so they remember last year when you know they had maybe well socialized pets and now it's this christmas and now maybe they've gotten a new adopted pet or something that's shy and, you know, it can be a whole different ball game. Um, yeah. and, and, like, I know, like, in, in our case, we have a, a little dog, and he's 14 now, and he's been going quite blind this past year. And so things that, you know, we never would have worried about before, we now really have to take into consideration. Like, he doesn't like it when people just come up to him and touch him, you know, mm. because it startles him. And, and so just things like that. Like, I think you just got to really think and, and be aware that it's you know it's another year has passed and maybe things are a little bit different and it's not a time to be complacent because i'll tell you there's nothing that ruins your holiday quicker than having your pet go missing that's we right just hear it all too often yeah mm-hmm. so, yeah holidays yeah. seem to be so, the time that they go yeah. missing mm-hmm. the most so let's right. talk about right. some of the safety precautions that people can take and then we'll talk a little bit about some other things just pet safety things like, um, you know, maybe some foods and things like that that yeah. people should think about as well. Okay, yeah. So, so like, this, one of the first things that we always talk about is, like, traveling with your pet because you may be going somewhere um, with your pet or you may be leaving your pet with a pet sitter. But if, for, but if you're, you're traveling, one of the things, of course, that we always, always recommend and ask people to do is be sure that their dog is wearing... Um, uh, you know, a current ID tag, um, including their cell phone number. And if they're going to be somewhere uh, for a little bit of time, they may even want to put some additional information on the dog's collar, maybe with a, a temporary tag or even with just a, a piece of paper and some packing tape wrapped around the collar mm-hmm. so that there is just, you know, good current information on their dog. Um and of course, with that, of course, goes um, keeping, making sure that their pet's microchip is up to date. Um, everything is current and up to date. Or and, and if their pet isn't microchipped yet, this is a really great time to do it uh, yeah. before you go away. Yeah. Um, we uh, of course always recommend that if you're traveling, you carry a copy of your dog's rabies certificate with you, um, so that I mean, some some places just use the tags. But I always like to keep a paper copy with me um, just in case my dog were to get lost, lose his collar, and then is picked up by animal control. Because if you're going to reclaim your dog at um, an animal control facility, you almost always have to provide proof of rabies. Mm -hmm. And especially over the holidays, if you don't have that, it might mean the difference between getting your dog out today or getting your dog out three or four days from now when they can have a, you know, have a, a vet in um, to give your dog a rabies shot. If, yeah, if you right. don't have the proof, they're going to make sure that you get another one. So, that's good. Uh, I didn't even something. think of that. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. a good one. I didn't <laughs> even think about that one. But that's something that we, and I, I'm sure there too, but I know where we are, um, we, you, know, you cannot get your dog out of hot without a rabies, proof of rabies. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, I think it's a state law in all 50 states. I, I, I could be wrong on that, but 
Um, I think it is a, rabies is handled by the states and the state law to prevent the repass, you know, the increase of rabies. Um, what else? Let's see. Uh, if you're traveling with your dog, make sure you, you use safe driving tips. We've talked about that quite a bit in the past, but um, we always recommend never leaving your dog unsecured in a vehicle, um, that they should be safely buckled in or, you know, harnessed in with some sort of um, device in the vehicle. Um, and just take extra, extra precautions when you stop for fuel or for a potty break. Um, yeah. So that, that's the, that's kind of the danger that, that either that or an accident. Those are the two times that we find dogs go missing when, you know, they're traveling, yeah. um, is that they either get away at a fuel, at a, at a potty break or a fuel stop, um, or the, the, they're in an accident and, the dog gets either uh, ejected from the vehicle or um, an emergency responder accidentally lets the dog out when they come to assist. Yeah, and those are extremely scary and stressful situations when those happen. Mm -hmm. Yep. yep. Um, and then again, then you face with the whole thing about, you know, you've got a, uh, you know, the shirt's going to probably ruin your holiday and it's going to ruin your, uh, or it's going to put you in that really a uh, big predicament of having a dog that's lost from somewhere other than home, which is, you know, it can be really tricky, especially mm -hmm. over the holidays. Right. Um, so those are, that's actually traveling. Now, what about if you leave your pet behind and you leave him with a pet sitter? Wow. Mm -hmm. Whoa, that's a whole other <laughs> ball of <Yeah>. yeah. <laughs> Um So, um, we always recommend really, really doing your homework before you ask someone to be your pet sitter. You know, interview them, get recommendations. Um, if you are relying on a family member or a friend, you know, that, could, that sometimes can be the real dangerous part because they may feel, a, they may be a little bit overconfident because, you know, maybe they've been over to your house when your pet is there and they feel like, oh, well, they know your, your dog and everything's going to be okay and they're just going to open the door and let them out to go potty and they don't realize that that is very stressful for a dog um, mm -hmm. to, be, um, to be with somebody that's, you know, when their parents are home, when their pet, the real pet parents are home. Um, okay. so, and we see too many pets go missing under these circumstances. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's for sure. Um, we just, you know, just, just, you know, you can't be too careful. You know, nobody should be allowed to take their your dog out without, a, you know, a properly fitted collar um, and leash. And the ID tags should be always on. Um, and that uh, microchip should be up to date, of course. Um, and be very careful about asking, you know, about where are you going to let the person enter the house? Um, you know, are they going to... They, it's preferable if they come through a garage or a fenced yard, so you've got that extra door or gate um, to, keep them, to keep them enclosed. Um, right. And, you know, just make sure that everything is, is in good repair. Your fences and gates are in good repair before you leave. Um, and, you know, just, uh, you just can't be too careful. Right. Uh, yeah, just, that, that's a tough one when a <coughs> dog goes looking for a pet sitter. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, so, so I mean, I guess the other thing, the other c consideration is, is if you are staying home, um, and you might be staying home because of COVID, uh, we, but you may still be having a small gathering of people, maybe some family members or something coming over, although most <laughs> most places are, are discouraging that. Mm -hmm. um, but um, you want to just make sure that you, you know, you, you consider your, your pet and how he's going to feel about um, having people over. And um, again, like with our little dog now, we have to be so careful with him because he, he just, you know, somebody that he was fine with in the past, if they startle him, um, he may, he may nip, he may bolt. Um, so, uh, you know, I just, 
I, I just think that you want to really consider is your is your pet actually going to enjoy having people over, or would it be just better to put them in a in a quiet room and you know give them a toy or something to play with, um, and and just uh, just until you're sure, and especially mm-hmm. as people are coming and going, you know, right. uh, it's always always a good idea to play it safe. Right, especially down here. Now, where you are, you probably don't have people going in and outside all the time. But where I am, it's still nice out. People come and go. They they're in, they're out. Maybe your yard is not fenced. The dog slips past as somebody's going outside, and off it goes. So, I agree that the best place, the best thing I think in cases of small gatherings during the holidays, would just put the dog somewhere else. You know, somewhere safe. For you know, yeah. let just I, it's not worth it. <laughs> it's just not right. worth it. We see it happen so much down here right. throughout the year. Um, you know, when there's uh, holidays and gatherings, that the dogs are constantly getting lost. Yeah. It's just not worth it. Yeah, yeah, and people don't realize. I mean, they just they they think that they're just walking in and out, and they don't. Maybe they don't have a dog, or maybe they think that your dog is perfectly fine, and they don't realize how easy it is for a dog to slip out the door. Oh, yeah, so. especially if you've got little ones there, like your grandchildren yep. or something, and, oh, here, you want to go out? <laughs> exactly. <Yeah>. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh, that happened to us many years ago. My father was visiting, and he was already in his 80s, and... um you know, he just and and we'd had a a dog that was just you could just open the door and let him in and out all the time. And then we got a new dog which looked like the old dog, oh. and he just assumed that it was the same sort of thing. You know, oh, mm-hmm. new dog, but same procedure. Just open the door and let the dog in and out. And he let our little dog out, and oh my gosh, he yeah. was gone. You know, yeah. and. <laughs> Thank goodness we caught him safely, but um, it you know he it was just it didn't ever occur to him that the new dog was not like the old dog. <laughs> yeah, I know, and it is. I mean, uh, you're telling a story that happened to you, and I had one a few months ago that happened here. It was my husband didn't realize um, he was carrying in groceries or something, and we've got the door, and then we've got the porch, and then we've got a gate, but the gate was swung open just long enough. That little Haley went flying past him, and he didn't see her because he had groceries in his mm-hmm. hand. When he opened that gate, she zoomed past him, and thankfully, you know, she didn't go very far. But still, I mean, goodness, it can happen in yeah. the blink of an eye. You know, it really can. Yes, yeah. yes, yeah. yeah, that's. I think that that's the the main point. There is, it can happen so fast, um, and you know, especially like if you are having older guests over, um, you know, grandmas and grandpas, or you know, older aunts and uncles that you know, maybe uh, don't realize how how quick and how shy some dogs can be. Um, and, you know, just, it's just very easy for them. I remember a case that I worked on, the, the, an elderly parent came to the house and, again, just opened the door and the dog was gone and gone mm-hmm. for weeks, you know. Um, and, of course, it was awful and luckily the dog was sound, but... It was just something that she never really even considered, you know. It was just some the 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 daughter said it was some dementia and that she you know mm. she had been told not to let you know to watch the door, but it just happened. And, yeah, yeah, and that's what happens a lot of times. You 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 just mm-hmm. don't know. That's why it's always better to err on the safe side, you know, and. Um, Maybe let the dog see your company and then put the dog away in a nice, quiet, safe place so you don't have to worry about it because it is the last thing you want to deal with. And it does ruin your holiday if your pet gets lost. Not to mention what you mentioned earlier, that even if you are in your own town and a pet gets picked up by animal control during the holiday,